And the guide and giant killer reinforced her words. Release him at once, just so. Steer clear of the rage of Zeus, or down the years he'll fume and make your life a hell. With that, the powerful giant killer sped away. The queenly nymph sought out the great Odysseus, the commands of Zeus still ringing in her ears, and found him there on the headland, sitting still, weeping, his eyes never dry, his sweet life flowing away with the tears he wept for his foiled journey home. Since the nymph no longer pleased, in the nights, true, he'd sleep with her in the arching cave, he had no choice, unwilling lover alongside lover, all too willing. But all his days he'd sit on the rocks on the, and beaches, wrenching his heart with sobs and groans and anguish, gazing out over the barren sea through blinding tears. So coming up to him now, the lustrous goddess ventured, No need, my unlucky one, to grieve here any longer. No, don't waste your life away. Now I am willing, heart and soul, to send you off at last. Come, take bronze tools, cut your lengthy timbers, make them into a broad-beamed raft, and top it off with a half-deck high enough to sweep you free and clear of the misty seas. And I myself will stock her with food and water, ruddy wine to your taste, all to save off hunger, give you clothing, and send you a stiff following wind, so you reach your native country all unharmed. If only the gods are willing, they rule the vaulting skies, they're stronger than I than I to plan and drive things home. Long enduring Odysseus shuddered at that and broke out in a sharp flight of protest. Passage home? Never. Surely you're plotting something else, goddess, urging me, in a raft, to cross the ocean's mighty gulfs. So vast, so full of danger, not even deep sea ships can make it through, swift as they are, and buoyed up by the winds of Zeus himself. I won't set foot on a raft until you show good faith, until you consent to swear, goddess, a binding oath. You'll never plot some new intrigue to harm me. He was so intense, the lustrous goddess smiled, stroked him with her hand, savored his name, and chided, Ah, what a wicked man you are, man you are, and never at a loss. What a thing to imagine, what a thing to say. Earth be my witness now, the vaulting sky above, and the dark cascading waters of the Styx. I swear by the greatest, grimmest oath that binds the happy gods, I will never plot some new intrigue to harm you. Never. All I have in mind and devise for you are the very plans I'd fashion for myself if I were in your straits. Me, my every impulse bends to what is right, not iron, trust me, the heart within my breast, I'm all compassion. And lustrous Calypso quickly led the way as he followed in the footsteps of the goddess. They reached the arching cavern, man and god as one, and Odysseus took the seat that Hermes just left, while the nymph set out before him every kind of food and drink that mortal men will take. Calypso sat down face to face with the king, and the woman, women served her nectar and ambrosia. They reached out for the good things that they lay at hand. And when they'd had their fill of food and drink, the lustrous one took a new approach took up a new approach. So then, royal son of Laertes, Odysseus, man of exploits, still eager to leave at once and hurry back to your own home, your beloved native land, good luck to you, even so, farewell. But if you only knew, deep down, what pains are fated to fill your cup before you reach that shore, you'd stay right here, preside in our house with me, and be immortal. Much as you long to see your wife, the one you pine for all your days, and yet I just might claim to be nothing less than she, neither in face nor figure, hardly right is it for mortal woman to rival immortal goddess, how in build, in beauty. Ah, great goddess, worldly Odysseus answered, don't be angry with me, please. All that you say is true, how well I know. Look at my wise Penelope, she falls far short of you. Your beauty, stature, she is mortal after all, and you, you never age or die. Nevertheless, I long, I pine all my days, to travel home and see the dawn of my return. And if a god will wreck me yet again on the wine-dark sea, I can bear that too, with a spirit tempered to endure. Much have I suffered, labored long and hard by now in the waves and wars, Add this to the total, bring the trial on. Even as he spoke, the sun set and the darkness swept the earth, and now, withdrawing into the cavern's deep recesses, long in each other's arms, they lost themselves in love. <laughs>